So I'm going to talk about uh, state of the Frappeverse, which is, I think, ERP Next is much more than just ERP Next now. I mean, we have so many new products and so many new exciting things. So just want to uh, get everybody up to speed and set context for the next three days. Um, you know, just do a reflection on how things have been for the past two years and where do we see ourselves going from here. So this is going to be a very broad talk, some thoughts on you know, broad perspectives. Uh, so yeah, welcome back. I mean, we are at a new venue. Um, excited. Uh, you know, this is a big change. Our first five, six conferences, which we, if you've been around, you know, we're, we're at a community hall. And this is now a, a business hotel near the airport. So that's an upgrade. Um, and uh, yeah, very different venue next to the airport, very more commercial business focused than a very community open source uh, uh, free software kind of event. So that is, uh, that is a great improvement or a change for some. And uh, yeah, really nice hall, you know, the future is cloud as, you know, the, <laughs> the signs are all there. So what happened in COVID, right? We put ourselves in jail for two years and people started having all kinds of ideas of what the future is going to look like. And one company changed their name to something which they feel is the new universe. Uh, and we saw this, right? I don't think neither of us enjoyed this part of COVID, right? Calls and virtual, and we're done with virtual, right? So we're really happy to be in person, see people, uh, you know, with their full uh, high fidelity, high dimensions, you know, emotions, everything, right? Uh, this is not going to work. I mean, that's not the future, clearly. And then this also happened. Uh, people became insane, and uh, you know we had new kind of ideas, new visions of the future, which said, you know, cryptocurrencies and NFTs, and you know, if you've heard those things, uh, and uh, that that's, that that was another level of insanity. And uh, many of you may not have heard of t the tulip mania, but. Uh, this is probably one of the world's first recorded financial bubbles. So it happened in the 1600s in the Dutch Republic, where suddenly tulips came into fashion as a social uh, status. And, uh, and people just started investing in tulips because you know, they, they just bloom in one month of the year and they became very rare. And the price of one bulb went to 10 times the average income of the average Dutch citizen, right? And, and the Dutch Republic was the richest per capita republic during that time. So, you know, people thought like tulip bulbs were worth 10 times like the average annual income of a person. And then obviously that bubble crashed, right? Because that's just how insanity happens. And, and I, I, don't, I haven't heard of the term NFT in the last three months, you know? So I think we are probably through that phase now. Uh, more things happened. Um, you know, as we, as we were locked in, right, uh, while we tried all things, I mean, the great resignation happened. People started questioning their purpose of life, quitting jobs, finding new ones, and uh, happened in Frappe as well. We sadly lost a lot of really, really good people we had, and um, very, very sad to see young people not being able to cope up with this, uh, you know, the mental health crisis that came, came with the lockdown. So that was sad. And like I said, like, you know, a lot of existential questions, you know, uh, we've been doing things the way for so many years and an event like uh, COVID, you know, where you're locked down, you know, it really, really questions like what, what everything, what is everything, right? I mean, so it helped us, right? It, I think it, in the, in the end, I think the journey was uh, quite uh, existential. So, uh, and then we realized we are also in the hardest software business. Uh, if not any, right? Um, um, like I just, I just had a list of all the popular ERP softwares out there, and and we realized that most of them are, you know, really really old. I mean, ERP Next is one of the youngest ERP softwares. Not, I mean, even though we are like in a huge startup bubble, but like there is no startup, very very few startups globally that actually do ERP software, because this is like the hardest software, uh, the hardest software in the industry takes a lot of time to build, very complicated, like all of you know all, all of that. 
but it took us a long time to realize that this is the nature of the business. So it's not us. You know, maybe maybe we always felt we are doing something wrong, right? So, but we just realized that uh, you know the ERP business is really hard. And when you look at open source ERP softwares, uh, so I'm ranking them by GitHub star. It's not a scientific ranking, but for whatever out there. And you know, Udo obviously is the elephant in the room, which is more than twice, easily, you know, twice the size of ERP Next. Uh, I knew there are a few of them, but like when you really look at Udo, right, it's open core, it's not really open source, right? Not only are modules closed, but like you can't upgrade. I mean, that's like the real killer, right? I mean, you may start, I mean, they really want you to use Udo, but you can't upgrade Udo. So it's, I don't think it's really open source. I mean, and uh, so that leaves us with the ERP next, right? I mean, we are the world's leading open source ERP. I mean, that's the reality out there. So, uh, and then this also happened during the lockdown. This is in the past. So since 2000, every month, how much funding has gone into open source companies, right? And the red line is like $1 billion. And, and, and as you see, like, you know, millions and millions of dollars are being pumped into open source because now open source is suddenly a legitimate way of distributing software and you know the cloud right i mean because people can easily extract rent from cloud so you know they're giving the software for free i mean and uh, udu raised 439 million dollars right i mean that's insane amount of capital and uh, you know they have to at least recover 10 times that and you know this this also kind of happened you know i just googled this maybe google is being kind to me but you know, you look at world's best ERP software, you know, ERP like shows up. So, we are doing something right, you know, in, in like, you know, even though it all, everything doesn't seem so doom and gloom. And uh, this also happened in the lockdown. You know, we found really good benefactors. Uh, people in India know about Zero Dai. It's like one of the most celebrated startups in India now. Um, and they started using ERP Next in 2016 and, you know, huge fans of open source and free software and uh, you know they just said like you know you guys are doing good work you know please take our money so it's not it's not really a venture fund but it's just funds for us to you know ha feel really that uh, we are not really worried about running out of money right so that that situation happened thanks to kailash mostly and uh, <laughs> Kailash is going to be around tomorrow or day after. You can, I'm sure you can ask him a lot of questions. What do you think about the investment? And then we, uh, uh, we started growing up, right? I mean, all these existential questions. We started questioning everything, you know, what going back to. Like, you have to find a purpose, right, ultimately to survive in this world. And we realize our purpose is, you know, what really excites us is liberation and freedom, right? So we really found that you know, the way we want to build this company again is around these core values of freedom and liberation. And it sounds very, I mean, the implementation is really hard is what we realized. And uh, then we tried some really radical things to run the organization, like, uh, you know, pick your own work, pick your own pay, and, you know, everybody gets a vote in all important decisions in the organization, even though it's a privately held company. Um, and, this is really hard. I mean, it's not really good. Uh, the, the foundational value of all of this is that we trust people to do the right thing, always. Right? And that trust goes all the way to allowing people to pick their own pay, right? I mean, that's, I mean that really changed everything. Uh, we just did it as a crazy experiment, but it, it changed our organization overnight. You know, I haven't seen anything like it in the past 15 years. It's not as popular as you think. Uh, I get very, very low ratings on anonymous polls inside the organization <laughs> because, <laughs> uh, like, when you when you do pick your own pay, like, you give the responsibility back to the people, right? I mean, that's incredibly hard for somebody to. I mean, the first thing people do is, oh, I can take any pay, right? So I'll take like, whatever, you know. So, if, I mean, there are, there have been surveys, right? Like, seventy percent people think they are the smartest. So <laughs> everybody. And that's legitimate because you know yourself more than anybody else, right? So you are bound to value your own self like more than anybody else. And then actually people went ahead and gave themselves 
you know, amazing pace, which was amazing. Uh, felt amazing, I think, to everybody instantly. But then they realized that pick your own pay doesn't mean it's a free lunch, right? I mean, they have to, uh, you know, come out and then, you know, justify that kind of pay because, you know, people. Otherwise, it's not fair to anybody. It's not fair to the investors. It's not fair to uh, other people, you know, who have more reasonable pay. So, this was actually really hard. It's still incredibly hard, and it's not as popular as you think. But I don't think we're going back on this one. But you, you, you will hear more about this. <laughs> so, so yeah, that's the most exciting thing. And uh, and you know, we also stumbled, right? Uh, once we got some money, you know, we started hiring, and then at some point we realized, you know, maybe it's not. <laughs> Uh, what we realize, uh, what we think, and I think also people, uh, you know, people took time to absorb all these changes, and you know, a lot of people left again, you know, sadly. A lot of people we had to let go because, you know, they had space which we couldn't justify for them, right? So, both, both of that happened. And then as, as we had announced last conference, you know, we are so more on the product side now, uh, breaking ERP next into multiple products, and that happened, this version 14. And now we are like 10 products. Like suddenly from, you know, we've gone from two main products to 10 products. And these are all very early stages now. But if you've seen them, they are like really, really good. What really drive, drove this is two things. One is something called Conway's Law that you, have, you ship your org structure, which essentially means that as we grew as an organization and because we believed everybody should have freedom and autonomy, so we couldn't control a team of you know, 30 engineers, um, you know, managing software, and Nabin is going to talk in detail about this, so I won't talk much. And then this also went beyond. We also released the marketplace, finally. People had been uh, asking for this for many, many years, but now we have a legitimate marketplace on Frappe Cloud, so that also happened. Um, and another thing that really changed in the last two years is Frappe framework itself became really good, and uh, and you know it's as you can see you know in the if you look at the number of stars I mean just after 2021 it just shot up, and a lot of the reasons for this is uh, you know obviously ERP Next getting more popular people really discovering Frappe as the powerhouse behind ERP Next and also you know amazing wow. documentation that you know Faris wrote uh, and uh, you know really great documentation uh, and you know all the performance hacks that. You know, Ankur is going to talk about. So, you know, a lot of good stuff is happening in Frappe framework. I mean, today I feel uh, it has always been like a hobby project for me. So, it was never like a professional kind of thing. But now, when I use Frappe framework, it feels like a professional world-class software, right? So, that that is happening. Just some numbers. Um, so, this is on Frappe. We have last 15 days. So, you know, it's been cloned 30,000 times by 6,000 unique cloners on GitHub in 15 days, right? So, a lot of people trying out Frappe Framework. Uh, this is our discuss forum, discuss.erpnext.com. Now regularly hitting 1 million page views a, a month. A lot of them are uh, crawlers, but still half a million page, view, page views from real people. So, those are really, really good numbers. 17,000 people on the user forum now. Uh, and, you know, you know, it's, it's, it's becoming like a really good, valuable resource for anybody who, who wants to have questions. Uh, and then, you know, we, you know we, we also built and released Frappe Cloud in the last two years, which is really our, um, I would say, ticket to more stronger, uh, building a stronger business in Frappe is, is Frappe Cloud, right? So, and I'm sure a lot of people are going to talk about Frappe Cloud, and I'm going to talk about it more. Just a stat I pulled up yesterday is that, uh, since uh, 2000, like we're hitting 4,000 sites created every month on Frappe Cloud. So that's like an insane number of people trying out and using Frappe Cloud every month. Uh, I think it peaked at around 5,000, but then we changed the pricing page and it <laughs> fell a bit, but it's around 4,000. Yeah, just to wrap it up, um, you know, we believe the future is open, like in the end, like open source will win, right? There is absolutely no reason logically that, you know, if, if there is good world-class open source software, you know, it's, it's going to win, right? There is no, and it's going to be about the best product. Like users don't care about open source. They care about using world-class products and extremely high quality products. So it doesn't, 
I mean, the, the way to win this is to build the best product, right? And that's going to be our continuing focus for the next few years. I mean, from whatever we see, we'll continue to invest and build the best product. That's, that's our, our uh, um, model on how, you know, our assumption on how things work. Build and they will come. And then you realize that to build world-class product, you need world-class engineers. Because world class, and we, we, we saw that, right? I mean, some of the new engineers we have had have had great impact on, you know, the way the product has shaped up in the last few years. And, and what I haven't written is world class engineers want world class salaries. So, I mean, if you've been following oil engineering salaries, right, it's, they've just been going insane in, in India, especially, I'm sure, other places as well. And yeah, we upped our partners game, right? Uh, last year we had 10 partners, like we have 46 now. So, I think this also happened. We have a really good partner game, and obviously, Umair is going to talk a lot more about it during the week. But I think we found some, some success in the partner story as well. And this is going to be our broad you know, roadmap of how we see things uh, in the future, right? Uh, you know, you have, we have you know, the physical infrastructure, whether that's public cloud or private cloud, and you know, our piece is going to be like, you know, where we will create value for the communities by managing DevOps on Traffic Cloud. And then obviously the products are going to be free. So, you know, that's always going to be like that. And then the services, I mean, you're already becoming a partner first service. Uh, our service organization is already becoming partner first now. So we really want to work with partners and then, uh, you know, uh, the community out there. So. Yeah, stronger Frappe, stronger community, right? I mean, end of the day, Frappe still contributes and drives most of the innovation and investment. So, you know, pitch out here to everybody to do business with Frappe as well. So, because, you know, it, it's all going to pay back. And, uh, yeah, you know, we've been on a very unlikely journey. And I think we'll continue the unlikely journey. You know, we believe that we, this, this community could be like, Katie said, right, the future of the ERP business, right? So we will we still believe that magic will happen and you know this we will be the world's best ERP. Thank you. If you have questions, no questions.